your take on the debate, Michael? Still go ahead. What was the key moment? She spanked that ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Was she prosecuted when she needed to prosecute? And all other times she was presidential. Yeah. And he looked small. He looked withered. He looked beaten. But most importantly, he looked pissed. And there's nothing worse than a pissed bigot on the stage with a woman he can't control. Tonight, Kamala Harris not only did not acknowledge that the American people are struggling right now, she didn't talk at all about how she will fix or try to fix what she's broken. And I think it's because she knows that she can't. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Thank you for dropping in and thank you for being a subscriber and supporter of this channel. So we got to react to the debate and a couple of clips that were released today about the debate. This 3v1 beatdown gang member style against Donald Trump, because let's face it, we knew this was going to happen. We knew going into the line then that Donald Trump was going to be prepared to be, you know, bitch left left and right by these people. ABC was not honest, not at all, and they could have done better. Okay, Michael Steele, you were quite animated when I saw you in the hallway earlier about that I'm debate. I'm trying to be I'm good. Gonna, I'm going to see what you're going to tell me you good. think of the debate that you told me in the hallway. What was your take on the debate, Michael? Still go ahead. What was the key moment? She spanked that ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what she did. She came and she walked on that stage. Look, for me, this it's one of those things that you didn't realize happened until about 20 to 30 minutes into the debate. Mm -hmm. And it's what everyone's talked about. And for me, it was the pivotal, most important moment of the debate was when they were introduced. And Donald Trump came out. And if you watch, go back. I tell everybody to go back and watch this. He comes out. He goes direct to the podium. He is not usually you go to the middle of the floor to greet your opponent. He went to the opponent. He had no intention of shaking her hand. She walked across the stage right into his space, stuck her hand out and said, Kamala Harris. First off, I'm saying my name so you get it right when you <laughs> say it, which he never said once during the entire debate. Mm -hmm. Two, he never looked at her during the entire debate. And there was at this point about 20 to 30 minutes in um, where that moment for me hit and resonated because she owned that stage from that very first moment. Very much to what Molly was just saying, that what she did was she prosecuted when she needed to prosecute and all other times she was presidential. Yeah. And he looked small, he looked withered, he looked beaten, but most importantly, he looked pissed. And there's nothing worse than a pissed bigot on the stage with a woman he can't control. And he, she gave him no quarter for that. She gave him no room. And even in the one moment where she talked while he was talking and you knew it was the moment he wanted and he rehearsed it and he was so anxious to say it. This is the kind of stuff these Democrats are focusing on, guys. It's really hysterical and it's like a comedy skit because they don't even question the lies she put out to begin with. Like fracking, right? She didn't even address the immigration issue. She, all she wanted to focus on was the attacks against Donald Trump as well as ABC. And this is the first thing that come out of these people's mouths like Michael Steele. When he looked at her, he goes, I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking. <laughs> It does that felt, sound from? Then he said, "Does that sound familiar?" That sound familiar? <laughs> yeah, he was feeling clever. Yeah. yeah, he was feeling in his oats. He was clever, and there was nothing. Yeah, you could hear a collective. Uh, what did he just do <laughs> across the country, mm -hmm. even amongst his own people? So I think tonight um, was definitive yeah. for her. Tonight, Kamala Harris showed that she was not just a vice president; that she was, in fact, ready to be president on foreign policy, on the economy, yeah. on domestic social issues, on issues, sensitive issues around abortion and race. Yeah. She had a presidential vein that, that popped out very clearly for the country to see. And Donald Trump, the only thing he could do was stand there and look at the floor, sulk, pout. And on Twitter, the only thing MAGA could complain about 
was, oh, ABC, why are they fact-checking only Donald Trump? <laughs> uh, because he was the only one lying on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? He was the only one lying on stage. That is the biggest load of shit I think I've ever heard. She said so much crap, so much crap, and she was not fact-checked not one time. Donald Trump, on the other hand, he was fact-checked continuously, and Kamala repeatedly threw out these lines like about Charlottesville, like about the bloodbath, right? She kept going on these things, and ABC was not pressing her. They were just letting her get by on it. And it's absolutely ridiculous that this is the state of our uh, news agencies, right? These left-wing news agencies completely show their biases, and it's out in the open. Complete Trump-deranged individuals. So thankfully, Trump's team has got people like Tulsi and Vivek to back him up and to mention that these people aren't even Republicans. And that's something to say as to why they would pick Trump over Kamala. Because Tulsi used to be a Democrat and uh, Vivek is a Libertarian. Why Now, why would they go out and support a Republican and they're not Republicans? And they were presidential candidates. They didn't want to go support Kamala for a reason, guys. Watch this. We've got Tulsi Gabbard, as you can see, with us now. Tulsi, your thoughts, because yeah. you look at social media and a lot of people, even Republicans, thought the former president took the bait a lot tonight, much more than he should have. Uh, I saw something uh, quite different, Trace. What I saw was President Trump staying very focused on the issues that are most important to the American people continuously, no matter what kind of lies uh, or, or baiting attempts Kamala Harris or the moderators threw at him. He kept coming back to the issues that the American people are concerned about. He kept coming back to Kamala Harris's broken border and the fact that that's causing incredible hardship and people to be afraid to walk on their own streets. He kept bringing it back to rising crime and the fact that most Americans now having a hard time affording the basic necessities because of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden's inflation and rising cost of living. President Trump brought voice to the American people who have felt ignored and unheard for the last three and a half plus years by the Harris and Biden administration. And tonight, Kamala Harris not only did not acknowledge that the American people are struggling right now, she didn't talk at all about how she will fix or try to fix what she's broken. And I think it's because she knows that she can't. It's interesting, Vivek, because Tulsi says that the former president brought voice to the American people. Did he bring the fire to the feet of Kamala Harris? Did he press her enough on all of her flip flops? Well, I think the most important part was that he actually spoke for the 80 plus million Americans, probably 90 plus million Americans, if things go well, that are going to vote for him. But also for many of the Americans who may even disagree with some of his positions, they don't want to stay out of World War III. I think Donald Trump spoke really clearly to the fact that Kamala Harris's words pale in comparison to his actions in securing peace. We were on the brink of war with North Korea, kept us out of it, avoided two major wars that we're now in, Russia, Ukraine, what's going on in the Middle East. And so I think he really landed that. As far as it goes to holding Kamala Harris's feet to the fire, you had muted mics in each direction. That's the job of the moderators. And particularly the, yeah. one of the two moderators, I thought, did a disastrous job today in feigning fact checks of Donald Trump without remotely even appearing to apply those same standards to Kamala Harris. But I do trust the voters, Trace. They've been tricked by the media before. I think many voters are now attuned to that. And so what we may see is that may actually backfire in a yeah. counterintuitive way where people feel like Donald Trump's being set up. And he, he makes a very good point, Tulsi, because even some of the Democrats that I talked to tonight were like, yeah, it seems a little one sided. It seems like they're fact checking Trump at every opportunity and they're letting Kamala Harris just run wild. Which wasn't a surprise to President Trump at all. He knew very well going into this debate and agreed to it anyway, knowing that it was going to be a three against one debate the entire time. This just shows, again, Donald Trump isn't afraid to, to debate Kamala Harris or anyone, anywhere, anytime. And I think it says, uh, speaks volumes that right after an hour and a half long debate, it's close to midnight. Donald Trump came straight here to this room and spoke to hundreds of reporters, answered yep. their questions, walked around to different parts of the room. And where's Kamala Harris? Still, here we are. She hasn't done a single solo interview with any reporter She's the one who's afraid. She's good at reciting rehearsed lines. But when it comes to actually telling the truth to the American people, she is failing on all fronts. And the biggest thing mm. is she, this is a slap in the face to voters because she is too afraid to speak to reporters. She's too afraid to answer questions. And they're the ones who lose as a result.
Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you both for your time. We appreciate it. When it comes down to it, she is supposed to do her job by swaying the undecided voters, and she did not do that very well. I think the undecided voters, these independents and these battleground states, we're not convinced that she's going to change, guys. Now, we need to go to Megyn Kelly because Megyn Kelly, uh, she has some words to say. Media Light writes, three against one, Megyn Kelly unleashes on biased ABC debate moderators and their, quote, full of shit facts checks. Watch this. I'm disgusted. I'm ashamed of those moderators at ABC News. They did exactly what their bosses wanted them to do. The person who runs ABC News is a close personal friend of Kamala Harris that is responsible for Kamala Harris and her husband meeting. And they did Dana Walden's bidding tonight. It was three against one on that debate stage this evening. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly, a special program tonight for you reacting to the debate. It was three against one. It's very easy to look like you know what you're doing when both moderators are entirely on your side. Trump did the best he could under the circumstances, but it really was like three fighters in the ring pummeling one opponent. And Trump tried to take them all on. He did fine. He did as best as he could. He was thrown a few times to the point where he was unnecessarily defensive and he was getting angry. And so was I. <laughs> Were you? This was a mistake to trust ABC News with this debate. The Republicans must learn from this mistake. The same way the Democrats never, never agree to do anything with moderators they don't entirely trust. This should be the last time the Republicans ever do this. Because those two moderators try to sink Donald Trump tonight. The numerous fact checks on what he said and none on what she said. None. I don't remember a single fact check of anything she said. And she lied repeatedly. She just got away with it. In the moderator's eyes, that was Donald Trump's job to fact check her. That's correct. Except you didn't employ that same tactic when it came to Trump. And you accused him of lying even when it was your opinion that he lied. When Trump tried to say that his comment that he lost 2020 by a whisker was him being sarcastic, David Muir actually injected saying, I didn't hear sarcasm. Who gives a shit what you heard? Who died and let, left you political analyst in chief? You're supposed to be the objective news anchor of World News Tonight. That's a comment you make to your significant other, David. Not on the debates. I it didn't sound like that to me. Shut up. That is inappropriate. It's not for you to make that call. Leave it up to Kamala Harris. Leave it up to people like me who will play the soundbite and let the audience decide. But you were out of line and they did it to him over and over and over again. And the worst, the worst piece of all of this is the obvious tactic by ABC News, which was as follows. Mr. Trump, you said something incredibly controversial and terrible. Let me remind you of what it was. Do you have any regrets or thoughts on how terrible you were? Trump answers. Vice President Harris, how bad is Trump? And then she'd answer. It happened over and over again. That was the format. Mr. Trump, you're a piece of shit. Kamala Harris, isn't he a shit? Thank you. It, it was incredible. And then anything Trump said, fact check, fact check, fact check. And their fact checks were full of shit. I'm, I'm swearing even more than normal right now because I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm angry at them, at ABC, at my industry that I want nothing to do with. And I, I'm, I've never been happier to be outside and be able to say how I truly feel. And yes, even with some colorful words, because that's what the situation calls for. They're trying to steal this election. They're openly working to sink him. I don't, I think it was so bad. Their, their bias against him and toward her that it's going to backfire. I actually think 
the American public is going to see through this. Folks, the media is supposed to be unbiased and impartial, and that's not ex what they're doing at all yesterday. It was straight up dogfight, and Trump was in the losing end. He literally had no standing ground going against this biased news agency and Kamala Harris, who got all the rainbows and flowers and hugs and kisses. She didn't even stay after the debate to take any questions. She went straight home. That's how much she gives a damn about swaying our votes because she thinks she has this in the bag. She really does think like that. And the people like ABC and MSNBC, NBC, CNN all believe that because they are helping her get propped up to win this debate. Seriously, so many lies about the abortion, the eight month, the nine month baby lie, the take not taking your gun lie, the fracking lie, the defund your police lie. There's so many that we could cover that we could play in this clip today. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments, guys. Like, comment, and share to support this channel. Peace.